Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Sunday, May 16th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Digitalassetlife.com, a free site. Let's talk crypto. But first, I'm going to share what I'm doing. I'm going to share ideas I'm pursuing. This information is just being offered for entertainment purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. I advise everyone to do their own research and to consult with their own financial consultants. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now this weekend, cryptocurrencies have been getting crushed. These are the days when crypto is down, when it's not fashionable to talk positively about crypto. That a positive person like me likes to discuss them. Right? We're not here because of a fad. We're not here because crypto on some days is popular. Rather, I'm in crypto because I believe they have incredible investment opportunities. Now, let's give a quick overview, just a short summary of how I see the space. By far, in my opinion, the best crypto investment someone can make is Bitcoin. Right? Even now, with all of this DeFi, it's Bitcoin. That's the gold standard. Bitcoin has the longest history. Bitcoin has the biggest name. Bitcoin doesn't have competitors out there that can match Bitcoin in decentralization, that can match the recognition Bitcoin is getting from institutional investors right now as a store of value. Right? Understand, if you're looking for a cryptocurrency with name recognition and a history, right? The hash rate is key. It shows that Bitcoin has the greatest level of security in the cryptoverse. Then in my opinion, Bitcoin is the top coin to have. Also, I've been in Dash for a very long time. Dash is a spinoff of, of Bitcoin. Dash has an excellent governance structure. Excellent. Has had it for years. Dash is an innovator. It's Dash who pioneered the masternode concept that so many are copying right now. For those in the know, Dash actually has a venture capital arm and is now investing in companies. Right? This is while being decentralized. And of course, Dash has certain things that prevent a 51% attack. Right? Dash pioneered the concept of chain locks. I like coins that are innovative. I like coins with histories. I like coins where there isn't confusion over the use. Dash is superior to Bitcoin as a means of exchange. Bitcoin transactions take a long time. I don't want to fool around with things like the Lightning Network. I want everything on chain. So when I'm doing transactions using crypto, I like Dash, right? Like many Bitcoins, in the last month, Dash is up big. Now, while I have owned Ethereum for years, and understand, my motto is don't be right, make money. Right? While I have owned Ethereum for years, while I still own Ethereum, in my opinion, Ethereum is overrated. Right? All you have to do are a few Ethereum transactions to realize you're dealing with high prohibitive fees. Right? Fees of sometimes $25 and higher. Let's face it, too. The platform doesn't have a high capacity, doesn't have a high throughput. You could only do something like 20 transactions a second. 
That's a problem. The technology has passed it. And of course, viewers know I'm down on the fact that Ethereum doesn't have a maximum supply. I understand there's talk about making it deflationary and stuff like that. I'm tired of the talk. Understand the talk's been going on for so long about remedying Ethereum that you have coins like Polygon, what used to be known as Matic, that came along and are doing quite well. Matic, of course, is in the top 100, right? It's a coin that is supposed to help facilitate Ethereum transactions. That's how bad it is, folks. Entire cryptos have popped up on the scene to help Ethereum handle its capacity. Ethereum has many competitors, right? Many competitors. While I own Ethereum because it has been profitable, technologically, I'm more interested in its competitors. Let me just point out too, for U.S. residents, it's different globally, but for U.S. residents, in terms of staking on an exchange, right, which is less than optimal. Obviously, the best way to stake is for you to have your cryptocurrency in a hard wallet. But the best way to stake on an exchange, the best deal I found, is Polkadot on Kraken. Kraken one of the better exchanges, a licensed exchange, is giving you 12% interest on your Polkadot, right? Keep in mind, as Polkadot increases in value, you're getting a greater increase in value than that. But right now, just know, Polkadot and its sister coin, Kusama, you're getting 12% right now on Kraken, I feel, as a staking play that's the best staking play for U.S. residents out there. Understand, they don't allow us to trade on exchanges like Binance. We have to use Binance's U.S. site, Binance.us, that doesn't have the capability of Binance. Right? You'll find that the exchanges out of Asia allow you to do so much more than what we're allowed to do here in the United States, right? But even for us, U.S. residents, you can get 12% by staking on Polkadot. It's very easy to do. Once you buy Polkadot on Kraken, a button appears. It says stake. And when you hit the button and just follow a few other instructions, you're up and running. Now let's talk about Elon Musk's concern, sudden concern, after spending over a billion dollars on Bitcoin, about the environmental risk caused by Bitcoin. Now let me just point out, as someone who used to hold Tesla stock, Tesla stock is down 20% on the year, right? Crypto, quite frankly, has been one of the best performing parts of Tesla. Right? It's actually done better than Tesla's car selling business. Right? Think about it. So, of course, the timing of Elon Musk's statements are a great distraction. You can imagine if you hold Tesla stock, oh, suddenly you're looking over here at the environmental risks supposedly caused by Bitcoin mining. And you're looking away from the fact that Neo, Xpeng, are doing quite well in China, electric vehicle competitors to Tesla in the marketplace. You're overlooking the fact that Xpeng right now has created more than a thousand charging stations in China. You're overlooking a lot, right? You're over here thinking about Elon Musk on Saturday Night Live. You're over here looking at the environmental risks. Well, let me just say bluntly, I don't get the argument at all, right? Think about the uses of electricity. Understand what Bitcoin accomplishes, right? Bitcoin is providing banking services. Good crypto is providing banking services, economic inclusion to the unbanked. 
to parts of the world where, quite frankly, you have people who don't have bank accounts, who don't have access to financial markets. How can we have efficiency in financial markets when there are barriers that prevent people from participating? Right, so understand, Bitcoin is one of the best uses of electricity on the planet. Bitcoin's use of the electrical grid should be prioritized because it's that important. Think about it. You're in Venezuela and your local currency, the Boulevard, in an environmentally rich country, has such high inflation that merchants can't even stay in business. That stores using the boulevard have empty shelves. And then along comes Bitcoin and Dash. They're both doing well, by the way, in Venezuela. This isn't a hypothetical, folks. This is a reality. Along comes Bitcoin and Dash, and suddenly the merchant understands that if he accepts Bitcoin and Dash as legal tender, as the you know means of exchange, then he can actually do business. Because unlike the local currency, Bitcoin and Dash are going to hold value. The customers then figure it out. Like some NBA and NFL players here in the United States, they start wanting to be paid in Bitcoin and Dash. Because they want their earnings to maintain value. Right? Suddenly... Mom and dad have savings. Suddenly, people are able to buy food. The value of their money isn't evaporating while they stand in line at the market. Now, folks, I don't know about you, but understand a stable money supply is one of the most important things in life. What are you working for? Some evaporating fiat currency or sound money? Money you can rely on. Money you can save because it's going to hold its value. Right here in the United States, we're watching the price of a Big Mac slowly rise. We'll understand what that means. It means some families go to McDonald's and are unable to afford the meals that they were able to afford before the inflation. Now, if you have sound money, guess what, folks? The price of the Big Mac denominated in that sound money, like Bitcoin, like Dash, stays the same. You're not losing the purchasing power of your cryptocurrency. So literally, Bitcoin right now is helping people afford food. It's helping people have the opportunity to afford housing. It's literally giving people the opportunity to actually participate in the financial world. Right now, suddenly, you have money to save. Now... You might even start fooling around with BlockFi or Nexo or Celsius. And you might start lending them your Bitcoin to get interest on your Bitcoin. Now, let me just say it won't be until Elon Musk starts complaining about the amount of electricity used by televisions and video games that I'm going to care one iota about his concerns about the use of electricity by Bitcoin. Right, folks, understand, on the food chain, a sound financial system should be one of the top priorities. We use electricity on so many things, it's astounding to me that we're going to criticize the use of electricity to create sound currency, status quo changing currency. 
bank disintermediating currency like Bitcoin. The whole argument is damn foolish. Let me just say, if I went around and thought, oh, well, you know, in the United States, some of these households have three, four TVs. Right? How much electricity is used by cable boxes? Video games, Sony PlayStation. Then I added that up and I said, wow, this number is high. This is more than the electricity used for A, B, and C. Right? It's when the world starts doing that that I'm going to care about hearing an argument like that for Bitcoin. Just downright ridiculous. So look, I love Elon Musk. I love entrepreneurs. I love a guy who has multiple businesses, right? Tesla is just one part of the Elon Musk uh, economic tree. He's also doing SpaceX. I understand that the tunnel under Las Vegas done by Boring Company uh, is completed. Elon Musk delivers, ends up with actual products. Okay, great. But Bitcoin's much bigger than him. Much bigger than him. Right? Understand, to be blunt, Tesla needs Bitcoin or a Bitcoin equivalent if they decide to pour into Cardano or some other limited supply cryptocurrency, only one that's proof of stake and not proof of work. Okay, fine, but understand, Tesla needs that more than the cryptoverse needs Tesla. Tesla is just another car company. The financial markets are much bigger than that. Put differently, Tesla's not the only Fortune 500 company that's bought Bitcoin. Elon Musk is not the only billionaire interested in Bitcoin. Maybe it seems that way on Twitter, but Twitter isn't the real world. Now let's talk about what I like. Because Ethereum has dropped the ball, right? Let's call it what it is. When I'm doing a transaction and then I find out that the gas fees are north of $25, that's just not doable, right? When, you know, the capacity of the network clogs up because the network can only do that many transactions. That's not doable. So to me, technology has passed Ethereum by. I know that's not what's being reported in the press. I'm interested in Ethereum's alternatives. Let me say this too. As investor places Matthew McCall, you want to Google him, uh, points out, we're in the early innings of the game. Some of you have written me because I talked about Cardano here online when it was less than 10 cents a coin. People are saying, hey, how much longer is this going to run? Folks, you're in the first inning. You're, you're in the top half of the first inning right now. Understand, Cardano is just rolling out smart contract capability. Let's talk about the importance of cryptocurrency. Charles Hoskinson and Cardano actually have deals with some African countries to bring the cryptocurrency to those countries and to set up a financial framework there. Folks, that's huge. When you hear that Jay-Z and Jack Dorsey are actually financially supporting crypto expansion into Africa, into India. Folks, these are key parts of the world. India is about to become the most populated country on the globe. It's already the biggest democracy. That's not the U.S., that's India. Right, so just understand, something like 14% of the United States, according to some polls, own crypto. Right, folks, that number is going to climb to north of 
Fiat currency, quite frankly, can't deliver what crypto can deliver. The other day, I was in a restaurant. And, uh, you know, the latest thing in restaurants is they have QR codes that you can just scan into your phone to look at the menu. This way, in this COVID paranoid world, right, it's a no-touch menu. I can cruise in, I take my phone out, I just scan the QR code, and boom, there's the menu. Right, think about what's coming next. I'll be able to go into the restaurant, see QR codes, take out my phone, which will have a crypto wallet on it, and I'll be able to just scan the QR codes and pay for meals. Folks, that's, that's coming in a matter of months. You know that already because we have antiquated credit card kiosks on tables in places like Applebee's right now. Why would I want to pay big credit card fees when I can do a seamless transaction using crypto? Understand, too, the transactions are on the blockchain. They can have it set up so the address you send your payment to, they'll know what table it's from. They'll be able to look on the blockchain and say, oh, you know what? Table 5 has paid. Here's the ledger. Fiat can't match that. The powers that be know it. That's why we're hearing about central bank, digital currency. They know the pieces of paper in your wallet can't do that. So we're going from the Stone Age financially into 2021. So I like Cardano. By the way, the Dedalius wallet, if you download that software wallet, believe it or not, you can link it to a ledger, hard wallet, right? Cold wallet that's offline and you can stake and you'll get 4%. Think about that. You don't even have to stake on an exchange, right? You're getting 4% and your Cardano is off line, right? The, the Dalius wallet memorizes the address and then shows you the money you're getting as you stake. Obviously, Polkadot and Kusama are must-owns. I like Solana as well. But to me, the elephant in the room, and, and let me just say this again, the developer of Cardano, Charles Hoskinson, and the developer of Polkadot and Kusama, Gavin Wood, helped Vitalik Buterin invent Ethereum. Understand, the guys who helped put Ethereum on the map then left Ethereum and have now surpassed Ethereum in terms of the potential of their projects. I say potential because, of course, Cardano has been snail-like in releasing new features because what they're doing is peer-reviewed, right? Hodgkinson realized that Ethereum was rushed to market too fast. So he's making sure everything is vetted. He's dealing with academics, right? University of Wyoming, MIT, other schools before he releases things. Well, let's just say, to me, the Ethereum alternative that has caught my eye of late because it's its own ecosystem is the Binance Smart Chain. Now, let me take a step back here. Here in the United States, we're so deprived because of too many regulations, because of too many people like New York Governor Andrew Cuomo trying to save us. Right. That's why, you know, cryptocurrency companies have a hard time operating in New York. Right. That everyone's in love with Coinbase. Now, full disclosure, Coinbase has been good to me. Back in crypto's early days, Coinbase was a breath of fresh air. But what the public doesn't realize is Coinbase isn't close to Binance. It's 
it's not close in terms of what Binance is doing in the DeFi world. So Binance has a chain, Binance Smart Chain, that actually has a bridge to Ethereum's blockchain. Only Binance is cheaper, faster, with higher transaction capacity. Right? All the problems you have on Ethereum, you don't have on Binance Smart Chain. Right? So this is DeFi. Look, I know. It's centralized compared to Bitcoin, for example. Right? I get it. When a business puts its name on the chain, you understand you're not dealing with something decentralized like Bitcoin. Right? But my point to you is simply, folks don't realize that on some days, Binance Smart Chain is used more than Ethereum blockchain. Binance Smart Chain has a swap, pancake swap, that actually has exceeded the volume of Uniswap on some days. Right? We don't think of Binance as the center of DeFi, but yet they are right now. So, understand, everything's tokenized these days. Binance is a private company, but you can buy BNB coin. Right? Binance is token, and it's deflationary. Right? In my opinion, it's one of the better competitors to Bitcoin. Don't get me wrong, it's not Bitcoin. It doesn't have Bitcoin's hash rate. It's not decentralized like Bitcoin. But it is deflationary. They burn coins. In other words, Binance makes a profit and then they burn some of the coins. They use the profit to burn some of the coins. So, you end up with the capital gains. And you know the best way to avoid taxes on cryptocurrency. It's to hodl. You want capital gains. If you don't sell, and if you don't cash in on the capital gains, you're not taxed. Let me say this too. If you need access to the value of the capital gains, then you can borrow against your own holdings. Right? I mentioned some of the places where you can do that already for some cryptos. BlockFi, Celsius, Nexo. Well, just understand, BNB coin is in the top five of all cryptos right now in terms of market cap. PancakeSwap has been on a tear. But what I want you to do is to not focus on just the price appreciation, right? Until recently, until this huge downturn this weekend in crypto. But what I want you to do is to focus on its usage. Because if people are using it, if it has utility, then the price will follow. I'm also interested in BSC pad, a launching pad, an IDO for the Binance smart chain. Now let me make this point and it's going to sound ridiculous. It's hard to get some of these coins. So if you're a U.S. resident, you have to go looking for them on exchanges that you're allowed to be on. So BSC pad, which is just starting up, right? BSC pad, you can find that legally as a U.S. resident on the exchange called gate.io. Right? Gate.io. Understand, they have a know your consumer protocol. So you're going to have to give them 
identification, right? A driver's license, a photo of yourself. Let me also say too that you have uh, a couple of states in the United States where you're not allowed to be on gate.io. One is New York, I believe the other one is Washington. You want to double check me on that. But what I want people to do is rather than wait for Ethereum 2.0, right? Rather than believe in promises, you're supposed to wait for Ethereum 2.0, then you're supposed to believe that it's going to be better than Cardano, Polkadot, Kusama, Solana, and Binance Smart Chain. Right? Good luck with that. Right? Rather than do that, what I want people to consider doing is researching Binance Smart Chain. You're going to see coins that facilitate transactions on Binance Smart Chain. Right? Let me just say, Binance has a stable coin linked to the dollar, BUSD. And you'll find out that for some of the transactions on BSC pad, you actually have to use BUSD. Right? So, right now what I'm doing is I'm looking at Ethereum alternatives. Right? I'm already staking some coins, but I'm looking at Binance Smart Chain. Because Binance, I used to be on Binance, then of course Americans had to get off Binance. Now I'm on Binance.us, one of the best experiences you can have on an exchange. Binance has been the market leader in many ways. Well, just understand, unlike Coinbase, which again is in the United States, they're dealing with regulators who want their names in the paper. Um, Binance, by contrast, has been able to develop and take advantage of the DeFi world. And they have a clear opening right now because Ethereum is so far behind the times. Right? Understand, a transaction that might cost you 25 bucks on Ethereum right now, you can do for under a dollar on Binance Smart Chain. So, the key people in crypto, one of the key groups, are the developers. Folks, they're flocking to Binance Smart Chain. You know that just by looking at the calendar of upcoming IDOs for BSC Pad. Let me close by saying this. You know, um, I'm staking different coins, and um, proof of stake, they tell you, hey, you need to align yourself with a validator. You have no idea who these validators are. Right? Not, none whatsoever. They uh, give you a list and, you know, uh, sometimes on some of these coins, they'll say, hey, this, this validator has a high rating. They have a rating system where they rate the validators. That's what proof of stake really is about. Right? Validators validating transactions. Now, I understand that there's a lot of uh, environmental concern out there, right? As if there's a better use of electricity than creating a sound monetary supply that can help feed billions of people. Okay, whatever. But I greatly prefer proof of work to proof of stake, right? One of the reasons to be into crypto is because you want trustless transactions, right? I don't want counterparty risks. I want a system that works because everyone is in it for themselves and is trying to make a profit. So I like the idea of miners having a presence. I like the idea of there being a technological race to come up with mining equipment 
that's more efficient than the earlier generation of mining equipment. I like the idea of miners trying to solve complicated problems in order to get the reward. I don't want to trust some nominated validator that I haven't ever met in my life, that I don't know about. Let me also say too that I like shared power in the crypto space. I like the idea of believing, and I know it's complicated. I know there are mining groups that emerged out there that had a lot of power. But I like the idea of mining groups picking themselves. Anyone with a mining rig can say, hey, I want to be involved with Bitcoin mining. Here's a profit opportunity. Let me learn what's involved. Let me get in it. I like that. I like that competition. More than I do the secrecy, and that's what it is. And trust involved in proof of stake. Right? There's a nominated validator who's handling uh, my stake of a cryptocurrency. And they've done a great job. Right? I haven't run into a validator that uh, has done a poor job. But just to understand, uh, years ago, the crypto community would be outraged by this. They'd be suspicious of this. I remember when NEO, the cryptocurrency, first came out and I heard about validators and I was like, oh, whoa, whoa, hey, hey, man, I, I just want some capitalistic miners involved. I want an ecosystem that has different parts. Right, so there's a group of miners and they can say, hey, hey, we want to say in this, that, and the other. I understand. It, it led to, you know, the splitting of Ethereum and Ethereum Cash and, you know, other, excuse me, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, uh, Bitcoin, Shatoshi's Vision, and stuff like that. I get it. But understand, that's one of the allures of Bitcoin. The fact that there are different groups in a crypto's ecosystem. So I understand it's fashionable right now to bemoan the use of electricity. This is even as electric vehicle industries are popping up in every country. Right? I get that people want to complain about electric use. Just understand that there is a Huge advantage, in my opinion, to a proof-of-work system over a proof-of-stake system. Right? And just understand that what sound money accomplishes is certainly worth that price. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video, positive and negative. I get what I'm saying isn't, um, isn't what's widely being reported. I know there are a group of people who love Ethereum, who believe it's still cutting edge, and who are looking forward to Ethereum 2.0 and love the fact that it's moving from proof of work to proof of stake. And I, uh, you know, understand that there are people who uh, are nervous about Binance for different reasons, right? Some of you are nervous about Bitcoin. I know Peter Thiel, uh, Stanford Law School uh, grad, um, is concerned about Bitcoin mining in China. If you have those concerns and you want to discuss them, I hope you do so in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.